Hi folks, uh, welcome to the cabin at Frog Hollow. We're uh, tying some, some favorites today. Uh, my pattern today is called the rattlesnake. It's been around for a long time. Uh, this fly, uh, Chris just says, you know, how many trout has this baby caught? And I said, well, you know, a lot of trout and a lot of smallmouth. It's a great fly and uh, I'm going to show you how to tie it. This is a two hook fly, so we're going to uh, attach the trailing material. We're going to use a 2457 uh, Tiemco for the trailer hook. <clears throat> I've snipped a piece of uh, anywhere between 12 and 15 pound uh, nylon coated wire, and we're going to enter this wire through the eye of the hook, both of them. And then we're going to loop it. Just wanted to put it in a vise to show you. We're going to loop it around the hook like so, so that it comes out. I'll show you when we put it back in the vise. Like so. So the wire is over the top of the hook, and uh, we're ready to uh, move on with the fly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the beads to this fly. Use the uh, bead of your choice. This happens to be a, uh, a metal bead. We're just going to slide it down. We're going to put a few of those on. And this is where this, the, the fly pattern actually got its name was from these beads that, you know, when I put them on there to separate the two hooks, it's like, wow, that looks like a rattlesnake. So that's how this fly got its name was that rattlesnake looking tail. I'm going to add, I think I'm going to add one more bead. Three or four. Just depends on how big you want this fly. And this is, uh, you know, about a size four across the board. Again, this fly is, uh, a big old streamer uh, and by anybody's measure. So we're going to put the front hook in the vise now and we're going to start the fly. So this happens to be a uh, Daiichi uh, saltwater hook. But you could use, oh for example, here's a uh, big Tiemco a size 4. Uh, this is their egg hook. This is a, a bonefish hook. I like it. It's super sharp. It's got a little turned up uh, uh, on, the, on the bend of the hook. So we're going to start now by attaching the rattlesnake portion of this fly. So we're just going to set that right there where the bead touches the back end of the hook. We're looking for that, that attitude. We're going to make a few wraps, adjust that wire right up on top, just like that. Get the hook proper. There we go. And we're going to wrap, oop, oh boy. You know what I did? I hit the point of that other hook, which happens. So don't panic. Life still goes on. <laughs> I've gotten some comments from folks that, you know, those mistakes that you make, Ray, geez, I make those mistakes too. Thanks for, thanks for not taking those out. So we're just going to pick up where we left off. Let me tighten up that thread. We'll pick up where we left off. We'll, we'll fix the errors of our ways here. But that's a danger right there, so I'm going to embed that so I don't do that again. Now, if it happens again, I can blame it on the thread. 
So now I'm going to lock these, these butts of this wire in by wrapping back on it. And wrap back on it. And we're going to glue them. I'm going to snip them out with my wire snippers here. One, two, lash those down good. Ooh, maybe it is a thread. Because that one broke too. No sense using a really fine thread on here, and I am. I'm using 8O, which is probably a little on the silly side, but. Okay, we're going to glue that. Wrap that on there tight. So next, uh, we're going to add some eyes. These are bead chain eyes. You can you can eye it or not eye it. That you know that is entirely up to you. I like the looks of it with an eye. Also adds a, just a touch of weight. Put a spot of adhesive right there. And a little bit of body material. This is braided mylar tinsel. We've just got a, a bit of a body showing there because we've got a, a rabbit wing going over top of this, but let's just do this proper. Make sure we've covered our tracks properly. Looks, looks pretty darn good. Nice fat body on this bug. You know, with the wire uh, coming up and then going back, builds up the body underneath. I'm going to snip that body material out. Now we're going to add a magnum rabbit strip to go across the back. So <clears throat> this is this is pretty easy stuff to do. What I like to do is snip just a bit of that hair right at the tie-in point so that we're tying in on the hide rather than on the hair. So we're going to tie that down really good and I'm going to add a spot of adhesive there as well. So, and that's how that looks. A little flexible cement right there. That's not going anywhere. And now we're going to go back. I like to go back. See my scissors there and the bend of the hook. I like to go back just off the bend of the hook, maybe half an inch. You, you can see this is a pretty good sized fly. This fly is going to end up to be about two and a half inches long. So we're going to pinch, clip that out. And now we're going to attach this to this rear hook. On the bigger rattlesnakes, this is almost a must. Otherwise, that material, as you're puppeteering the fly, will sometimes wrap around this tail. So we can cure that. And we're going to take this hide and we're going to mark on the back side of it where that needs to come through the hook. So I've just put a dot right there. And we're going to take that hook and push it right through the center of that rabbit hide. Hopefully without impaling ourselves. So that's how that's going to look right there. So the hook is in. And now we want to add a little bit of flash across the back. I like this Fire Tiger Flashaboo. I'm going to get one copper and a gold and an olive. I know that sounds a little weird, but I'm pretty picky about this. And not too much. So three or four sprigs right across the back, about the same length as the rabbit fur.
Get that out. Lash that down. And now we're going to spin the deer hair head. You know, I guess originally uh, I was thinking this fly was probably a sculpin-ish kind of a fly. It ends up, you know, it just looks like a lot of things. And I suppose more of a sculpin than anything else. I'm going to stack this hair. You can see it's kind of uneven. This is deer body hair, just natural. I do this in two steps which is called stacking. The first step is right on top. So we're going to measure back. I like this to be, you know, about the length of the body for that flared collar. I'm going to push that down. We're just going to flare it in place right there. So kapow. And we're going to do the same on the under underside. You don't need quite as much on the underbelly, but you can you can always trim off. It's damn hard to put it back on, if you know what I mean. It's like giving somebody a haircut. You can, you can always go back and trim a little off, but you can't put any back on. Do the same thing on the underside. And flare in place. Come right up through the eye now. We're going to jump in front of the eye. And I'm going to trim some of this out so I can flare in front. And I'm just going to rough, rough chop that out of the way because we want to flare some deer hair in front of that eye to complete the, the deer hair. You know, to get the down out of there. You can do that or comb it out, either one. This one up front we can spin. So we're going to lay that alongside of the hook, go around it twice, and let go of it and spin and flare. Push the hair back away from the eye of the hook. Just kind of packing it on there. It doesn't have to be packed super tight because, you know, this is subsurface fly, so the more hair you put on it, the higher that it rides in the water column. So, you know, tire beware, so to speak. And we're just going to work this in and around the eye. Don't worry if you trap a couple hairs here and there. We're going to trim this back, give a good tug on that. We're going to add some adhesive later. So, hey, what do you think? Well, we need a little haircut. So we're going to pop it out of the vise. And I do a flat cut across the bottom, right back to the flared collar. And turn it over. Trim along the sides. Make a nice taper going up the, the top. Starting to come together nicely. You can use a razor blade on this if you want. I prefer the scissors. Don't ask me why. I just got started doing this and I, this is what I do. Lots of folks use a razor blade. But I think you're going to like this look. I'm going to trim around this eye a little bit. Pull out a couple of the wild hairs that got away from me. There's the rattlesnake. And here what I do, I turn the fly upside down and I put the flexible adhesive right on the bottom of the deer hair a couple dollops that's gonna suck right in and around the shank of the hook and all of that hair is going to be permanently set and get a couple of those 
There's our flash across the top. The rattlesnake. 